What's up guys? I want to open today's video uh, with a quote from an interview with Peyton Manning's former offensive coordinator Tom Moore. Uh, the question is, uh, what is your offensive philosophy? And Coach Moore says this, simple is best, do less but do it better, out execute the defense and break their will. There comes a point in every game where one team breaks the other team's will. You do this by playing fast. The team that can play fast will break their opponent's will. The only way you can play fast is if you know what you are doing. The way you get to that point is by having a few plays that you repeat over and over again. Most teams try and do too much. And this is this is kind of the core of the philosophy that I'm trying to teach you guys. Um, you know, we're going to talk today about levels. We're going to talk a little bit more uh, about it from a two by two set. Uh, but but what we're really trying to get after here, guys, is 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 conceptually the point is simplicity. Uh, simplicity allows you to play fast. It allows you to be able to know exactly where things are going. Uh, and a quote from an article uh, about Peyton Manning and in the, in the Denver Broncos, when he was with the Denver Broncos, their offense, uh, one of the quotes was that uh, Peyton Manning, the, the key to their offense is not only that they have a finite number of plays, but they have a small number of plays that fit well together. Uh, this is based off the constraint theory, which the idea of the constraint theory basically means every play has a purpose, and you never just pick a play just to pick a play. The purpose of the plays is that they work off of one another to create a really systematic way of playing the game, and that's what we're after. So uh, with that in mind, guys, I want to turn to, uh, we're in the Denver Bron Broncos playbook today, and I want to talk a little bit about uh, the levels concept. Now, I also want to talk about uh, Madden one of the troubles with Madden is this it is a little bit different than the real NFL because of this what you'll often see uh, with most NFL defenses is that they will match personnel for personnel and what this means is for example if I came out in uh, the shotgun dice slot week what this shotgun dice slot week is is it's got three wide receivers one tight end and one running back now this is normally known as 11 personnel. Now, the way that defenses will defend 11 personnel in the NFL is that you will see nickel packages. Now, what the nickel package does is you will have three cornerbacks, you'll have two linebackers, two um, two free safety or two safeties, and then you'll often have four defensive linemen. The linebackers and the defensive linemen combination sometimes mess around. But the basic philosophy is that you have three corners. And what you're saying here is that my three corners are going to match your three receivers. Now, the key here is that this is not always true in Madden. And let me just kind of continue. So, for example, uh, if I was in this I-Formation uh, Pro, this is uh, what it's known as 21 personnel, which would be two running backs and one tight end. Now, two running backs and one tight end means that there's only two receivers on the field. So what the defense would probably do is they'd probably come out in something like a 4-3 stack defense because what a 4-3 stack defense does is it gives you two cornerbacks for those two receivers and then you have your linebackers uh, you know, to, to come, kind of come in and help against what could possibly be a running formation. Now, what this basically means for us today is that it's a personnel uh, it's kind of a personnel philosophy, and you'll see this. Uh, you see this a lot throughout the NFL, and this is kind of the traditional way of playing the game. What you'll have is you'll have, you know, basically the number of receivers are going to be matched by the number of corners. And what this is meant to do is it's meant to give you good matchups. It's meant to because the problem is you don't want to have, uh, for example, in the Super Bowl when the Seattle Seahawks played the uh, New England Patriots in last year's Super Bowl. One of the thing, one of the touchdowns that was scored was they flexed Rob Gronkowski, who was a really good receiving tight end, uh, probably a potential Hall of Famer on them in the making. They swung him outside and matched him up one on one with KJ Wright, and it created a mismatch. And Brady just it was a little go, it was just a simple fade route, and uh, and Brady just threw the ball to Gronk, and he won that one on one matchup. And I can show you, uh, I think I'll try to get a link in the description and you can kind of check that out. There's going to be a lot of links uh, today uh, for resources and things like that. Uh, but what we're wanting to continue to talk about today is the Colts 
personnel. Now, one of the things that Peyton Manning did with his personnel is that they were often in what's known as 11 personnel, which is the three wide receiver, one tight end. So something like this single back dice slot would be what they ran several times. Now, what this would do is it force defenses to stay in nickel personnel. Now, that was one of the primary reasons they did that because they believed that this this 11 personnel was not only their best personnel, but it also forced the defense to stay in a personnel grouping that they could kind of predict. Now, I want to talk about why it's important to understand that this doesn't necessarily carry, carry over to Madden. In Madden, a lot of the popular defenses this year, um, you know, and, and really the way I teach defense is to run, you know, kind of a core a core package. Uh, and the reason is because of the heavy use of no huddle, the heavy use of versatility. And so that's why I traditionally will enjoy the nickel defense normally. Um, you know, I, I, this year we're running the nickel 3-5 odd from the New England Patriots defensive playbook. And you can, you know, purchase that defense below. It's fairly inexpensive and it's actually, in my opinion, still the best defense in the game. But the reason that we go with the nickel personnel more than any reason is that it allows us to call it allows us field coverage and leverage and we'll talk about that in, an, in another video but suffice it to say for now the leverage that we get from the nickel 335 odd allows us to defend using roll coverage principles uh, which we discuss in the guide um, we, we, we can defend with roll coverage principles field coverage and and leverage and I talk about that a lot so what it really comes down to is the nickel 25 odd we use a heavy we heavily use zone coverage now the problem with utilizing zone coverage in this year's game especially is that zone coverage if the quarterback knows what he's doing or you know your opponent and the offense knows what he's doing if you're running zone coverage it just simply becomes flood principles and so they'll overload so that's where you'll see um, you know, people run, see if I can show you a play here. Uh, for example, uh, you'll see a lot of four verticals. So if you're a cover three team, which is something that I, you know, I've been running a lot this year, cover three style zone blitz, three deep, three under, you'll see a lot of this wide trips and you'll see four verticals. And this is a pretty common concept. What they're going to do is they're going to flood you deep and force your safety to pick one of the vertical routes to defend. Now, the reason this is important is because the, the more uh, you get into the game, the more you'll realize that when teams are running zone defense, it becomes read and react. And what they're often doing, the reason that I run the zone blitz scheme is because it really comes down to confusion, and, and that's the biggest thing. Um, because I can call three deep three under zone blitzes, but they, the zones can be going in many different directions and it's very difficult to read. However, if you're facing uh, one of the most popular defenses this year is to run the um, the dime and it's, it's a two man under defense. Now the reason that the two man under is so effective is because man to man defense this year is highly effective. Now the reason that we the reason that we bring this up is because oftentimes teams will run in Madden players will run defenses not necessarily based off of personnel. They're going to run defenses based off of level of effectiveness. So for example, um, in the Draft Champions Madden Challenge, you saw a lot of people running the 3-4 even uh, Mike Sam scrape or whatever it is. And then, you know, it, when we talked about uh, when we talked about problem in the Madden Challenge for Madden 13, ran 4-6 bear under. Now the key to remember with all of this is that they were running zone blitzes. Zone, zone blitzes, three deep, three under type of defenses. They weren't running man-to-man -man defense. In the NFL, a lot of teams run heavy dose of man-to-man -man defense. The reason is because man-to-man -man really is the best pass defense you can get because what you get, especially in a play like this cover two man under, is it's a very safe defense because you have the two safeties up top and then if you have good man-to-man -man coverage which you get by having good matchups having your covering corners covering you know my receivers then what's going to happen is you're going to have really 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 good chance of playing very safe defense is really what it is 
And the thing about two men under, and this is why it's so important for us to have this discussion today, what you'll see the more you rank up, the more you play, is that a lot of people are going to run two men under, and then they're going to drop zones to where you're targeting to kind of stop your pocket plays. And there's only a finite number of, of plays that beat two men under this season. So it's important for us to understand that because if we can get the team out of two man under, then we can start dealing with the zones. Once we get a team out of man to man coverage, it becomes gravy for the offense because zone coverage this season is much easier to handle than man coverage. And really, in the real NFL, that's probably true as well because what happens is man to man defense is big boy football. And what it really just comes down to is, especially when you're playing Madden Ultimate Team, if I have four corners that have 99 man coverage and you have four receivers that have you know, less than 99 route running, my defense is going to win every time because your man coverage rating goes against the route running rating when Madden's trying to figure out if you're going to win on a route or not. Okay, so, so the issue for beating man this year is to have good route running and it's also to have a couple of plays that are selective to be able to handle man-to-man -man defenses and that brings us to where we want to be at today what we're talking about is we're going to kind of continue on with the levels passing concept and I know I did about an 11 minute explanation at the beginning but it's very important that we understand it so so this is the actual play diagram that Peyton Manning uh, is famous for if I can find it yep here it is it's called levels divide now Levels divide, he runs this out of a lot of different formations. Unfortunately, Madden only gives it to us in very, very few formations. But nonetheless, we can utilize it very well. So what you want to do here is, like on the, um, so we're going to use Emmanuel Sanders, uh, and, and you want to kind of, what you really want to look at here is the, the levels receivers are your kind of slot, you know, underneath style guys. And then your solo receiver for the levels is going to be Demarius Thomas. The cool part about Demarius Thomas is that he's a very good one on one receiver. What the levels essentially is going to do for you is it's going to allow you to have a lot of good one on one matchups. And then we've got, uh, we're actually going to substitute, um, actually, no, we're not. We're going to leave Owen Daniels in there. All right, so levels divide. I want to show this against a variety of coverages today um, because I didn't get a chance yesterday I just kind of kind of introduce it but I want to show you it first against man-to-man -man because man-to-man -man is the hardest one to beat and so this is your this is the key to cover two man is the press um, and I think that's pretty much universally agreed upon now I want to talk a little bit today about safeties and leverage so we talk all the time, if, you, if you've watched any of my content, you'll, you probably have heard me talk about leverage. And what it basically comes down to is where the defenders can really defend based off where their pre-snap alignment is. So pre-snap leverage tells us a couple things here. First, the press alignment on number 11 here, Jordan Norwood, will show you is bump and run coverage on the outside. Now this is going to key you in that it's probably two men under. When they have that bump type of appeal, it means it's probably two men under. So that can that tells you a lot of things, but the biggest thing that it tells you is that he's going to get pressed at the line of scrimmage more than likely. If he gets pressed, he's not going to be able, the the timing of the play is going to be thrown off. So that is where we like to make a little bit of a subtle adjustment and it's very effective for man-to-man. -man. The other thing that's important to remember too is that the safety over the top means that he's gonna be deep. He's gonna play deep to short normally. Now this isn't always, this is your pre-snap hypothesis, but he's gonna play deep to short. So what you're wanting to do here, what I like to do, uh, there's a couple of different things that you could do, but what I really am a big fan of, especially if you're like, if it's just a first down and 10 type of situation, is I like to change the routes to give me a free release. Now this is kind of the Madden spin on the real NFL on the real NFL philosophy. Now most NFL teams are still going to be able to get a jam, but in Madden we're able to make a couple of adjustments. The first thing is that we can use we can create unbumpable patterns. 
So how we do that is this. We're going to take Norwood and we're going to place him on a hitch route. So you do that by, you know, you just hot route him to a hitch route. Now you see it's only going to go four yards and we want his route is the teaching point is that he's going deep. He's going to go about 10 yards and then cut to the inside. So what we're going to do is we're going to smart route it. And as you can see now, he's going about 10 yards. And even though the play art doesn't quite show it, he will actually go that 10 yards. Now, now, but the only thing too is that Sanders is actually going at about six to seven yards. We want to kind of shallow him down a little bit too. And so we're going to place him on a drag. Drag routes are unbumpable patterns as well. So now what you've got is good solid timing here on this left side of a, you still have the levels concept because the levels concept is really just a two man vertical stretch of the defense, which is what we talked about yesterday with the vertical stretchers. So now what we're going to be able to do is Norwood, when he when we snap the ball, Norwood's going to run upfield, and all we're trying to do here is watch the linebacker, the middle linebacker. So we're going to use our reading techniques, uh, and if you want to learn more about how I read the defense, um, kind of more advanced, you can check out our St. Louis ebook, and we'll try to make sure that's in the description. But basically, what's going to happen here is we're going to read the safety, and we're going to make sure that that safety is playing deep, and then we're going to read the middle linebacker. The middle linebacker is pretty much the key to this play because if the middle linebacker floats into his own coverage, we're going to know that we're going to need to go to Sanders. If the middle linebacker stays in man-to-man -man and, and kind of stays in the middle of the field, then we're going to know that we can go to Norwood. Okay, so here at the snap of the ball, linebacker stays short, so we're going to hit Norwood. And as you see, it's a quick, it's a quick hitting 10-yard little uh, hitch route, but it's very effective. So I want to show you from a couple of different angles here what's going on because this is really important. So we're going to look at this from the defense's perspective, I think, because it gives us the best perspective uh, that we can get here. So at the snap of the ball, we check the safety is going deep. He, and what you want to do is really their first initial step is back foot. So his back pedal tells us immediately, okay, he's in the deep third which means that we've made the right hot route to put that uh, receiver on a hitch. The next thing we do is check that middle linebacker. His first initial, his initial steps and moves is to sit down in man-to-man -man coverage alignment on the running back. That tells us we have a one-on-one -on -one underneath and he's gonna snap back, that snap back animation that we love. And we like to hold left trigger when throwing a bullet pass. Uh, we like to hold left trigger uh, because we get a low pass lead. That low pass lead is good because only our receiver can catch this football. And as you can see, delivered on time and an easy completion against man-to-man. -man. Now what I want to do is I want to show you uh, what can happen when the defense makes a couple of adjustments to defend this. To defend this. So they're in their man-to-man -man coverage, but what they do is they realize, well, you know, you're not really throwing the ball. I mean, against man-to-man, -man, when I run man-to-man, -man, you're targeting Norwood here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our user player and we're just going to take Norwood out of the picture. So you do your same, your pre-snap read is the same, so your hot routes are the same. And now what you're able to do, though, is Norwood is going to give you a good opportunity because the middle linebacker is going to run himself out of the play by running to Norwood. You now have this crossing pattern under, underneath for an easy couple of yards. Okay, so so that's a that's a couple of things that I, I really wanted to hit on, and what it's really going to do is it's going to force them to make a couple of different adjustments to stop your main play. And again, this is out of too high. This is out of a too high look with press alignment. So that is the basic principle. Uh, that you want to take when you're looking at facing this too high alignment. Now a couple of things here uh, to note is when they go to, so say they try to fake you out and they go they go zone but it looks man, it looks like man but it's now zone. Well again you you go back to your reads and what we've talked about before is that okay what's gonna happen here is the safety is gonna go deep to high the linebackers 
are also going to play deep to, they're also going to play deep to high. And so what you're going to do now is because the linebacker drops back, you're going to hit your little underneath crossing pattern. I'll show you that again because we didn't get a good you're going to hit your underneath crossing pattern to Sanders. And he comes in. I don't know what's going on with Peyton Manning. He's making some really pathetic throws. I think they've really nerfed his uh, passing ratings because of his performance this past season. But anyway, what you're going to do here, step up in the pocket, wait, deliver a nice little crossing pattern to Sanders. That is also why it's so imp important to have this route to Daniels. What it's called is it's called a, a seam read. And what it really is doing is it's forcing that linebacker to stay at home. Because what happens is this. If, if this linebacker plays shallow on the crossing pattern, then you're going to be able to hit Daniels right up the seam, as you can see there. Okay, So that's how they all kind of fit uh, together in one umbrella against two high safeties. Now this is just one little nugget of the levels concept and there's so many more things to discuss but I've already talked for about 20, 20 minutes today so we're going to go ahead and let you guys practice this uh, for today. I want to do, I do want to show you one other thing though with this and that is if you just run it like traditional against press two man this season um, you actually once the receiver breaks, once uh, once the receiver breaks, that being uh, Sanders, especially if he's got good route running, it's a really good route against man because he's got that inside release, and so you can hit that. Um, but the key here, again, is trying to make this as as consistent as possible, especially when facing that press alignment, because the press alignment is the core of what defenses are going to do to you this season. Once you get them frustrated with man-to-man -man coverage, then you can start running. Uh, then you can start running this play against, you know, zone, and it becomes a very good, uh, it becomes a very good little deadly play uh, that you can utilize. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in tomorrow's video. But I wanted to give you a little bit of background as to why we use this play, and I also wanted to talk a little bit more about how to use it against man-to-man. -man. Um, tomorrow we're going to talk some more about this play. Um, and the reason is because we're trying to deepen our knowledge of plays, not widen our knowledge of possibilities. Okay, so that's kind of the core philosophy again. And I want to I want to end again with this quote uh, from Tom Moore. And so again, answer his question. He says this: The way you get to the point of playing fast is by having a few plays that you repeat over and over again. Most teams, most NFL teams, try and do way too much. So think about that guys as you're putting your playbooks together. You don't have to run levels. You don't have to, it, this is just one little piece of the puzzle. The bigger point is keep it simple, but rep it over and over and over and over and over and over again. And be so fast with your reads and your adjustments. That's what's